Diagwyd Galair Accordia Augusta Foilter wrote, Welcome to be my guest with me, Mary Honan, on Lear Media TV, supporting the Samaritans, Limerick and Tipperary and Clare's Wish Foundation. Now, my special guest today is Anne Daly from Limerick, and Anne is a fabulous, fabulous artist. Hence, I've decided to use Anne, one of Anne's beautiful uh, contemporary paintings as my backdrop for today's show. Hello, Anne. Hello, Mary. How are you? I'm very good. Tell me, Anne, how did you're from Limerick? Are you originally from Limerick? I'm originally from Limerick. Could I say I can fly both flags? My mother is from Liscanner and my father is from Limerick, North well, Limerick. Don't hold that against her. Oh, no, not at all. I'm so happy. My God, I've <laughs> gone back up west to paint. So that side of the, the, the bloodline has um, enhanced everything about my painting. So that, that's Limerick. what I was going to ask you is I, I'm interested in why you choose such wilderness to paint. What you you the colors you actually see in the darkest of um, environments. Um, I mean, you would you go down obviously around Liscanner quite a lot, and and you 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 know when you look at the cliffs of Moher and places like that in the Burren, the colors that you can see amongst all the the bleakness that's there is and how you've managed to actually bring it out in your paintings is astonishing. Has it always interested you the sea? Have you always been fascinated with the sea? And I, with I, I, could I say that I've always been fascinated? I mean, I went to art college in Dublin and um, my work was very contemporary. Um, I would have always used an awful lot of texture. My work was very tactile and it was quite sculptural. So, yeah. you know, college, I wasn't painting like that. Was, you know, obviously college teaches you all, you know, new ways, but texture was always part of it. So um, having, you know, having had to work and earn a living and then going back to painting, I did instantly go back to using a palette knife and texture on canvas. And with that, I started to paint West Clare. Now I would have went to the scanner where my mother is from as a child. We always yeah. spent, you know, spent an awful lot of time up there. But we would have spent our time up there in winters at the darkest nights. We would have spent, you know, we weren't just holiday makers. We lived there as such. Yeah. So I would see the color in the darkness. Yeah. I would see the light in the in the in the darkness. And I think if you stand long enough and you look, you can see the color. You but I, you know, I'm. But I'm do you nervous. think that that's a metaphor for your life? Really, are you the type of a person that can see a positive, uh, a positive energy in, 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 uh, in um, situations that might challenge other people? Is yes, it? actually, Mary, you kind of, you know, you've just said something that, yeah, abs I, I thank you for saying that because you've just kind of brought something out. Um, yes, I would. I wouldn't be a dark person. I would be a positive yeah. person, for sure and certain, yeah. which is very interesting when people would see some of my work because it could be your, your work would be to some people very, very dark and very uh, deadening and very somber. But yet the colours that you seem to magnify in it is almost like a metaphor for how the artist sees life. Um, as I suppose a glass half full type of person, someone that sees that light at the end of the very, very dark tunnel. That's yes, it's very, that's very that's very interesting that you should and say beauty that. where anyone else would see um, ugliness and cold and depression. You yes, it's interesting. Right. Yeah, I I will say um, there shouldn't be. I mean, certainly I I think anyway, and it's not a deliberate thing. Yeah. I just love um, deep colors, and I like the drama in the sky, and I love movement because I paint with a palette knife. I I, I work quite with a lot of movement and a lot of paint so I like them to mix into each other working with oils it can do that so looking at the skies and the drama in the skies is quite challenging so that's why I tend to paint an awful lot of evening scenes like a lot of sunset scenes yeah. no matter what the color whether it be bright or dark they're usually evening scenes and there's always a beautiful light coming through there or not say beautiful light but most of them I would say beautiful light for me I would call yeah, it beautiful, yeah. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. light so yeah. without noticing any of this until I was really surrounded by all of my work in the gallery in Liscanner and sitting there and looking at it, 
I've noticed and, I, and I've come to the realization that even with the titles of my paintings, like memories or new beginnings or so it's on. It's always evocative of, in, of storytelling. And there's a message. A message. It'll be okay. Hang tough. Look at the light coming through. It's still beautiful. You know, time for yourself, taking a deep breath and so on and so forth. Having a moment to yourself. Yeah, I imagine a person sitting there on their own. I imagine myself sitting there on my own looking out where I just need a little bit of space. And I know, you know what, I probably wouldn't go down on my own, but I like the feeling of being there. So in my yeah. paintings, I'm, it's a longing to be there. Not Do you find that your paintings are, um, I suppose, in many respects, contemplative? Because yes. you, 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 um, when you're painting, you're thinking they're bringing back memories of a past. They're, they're, um, they're, they're sad, but yet, as I say, there's there's a sense of happiness there. There's there's so much color there in the in, in the sadness that I suppose for people who have who are grieving somebody, um, I see a metaphor in your paintings for you know even even amongst the darkness of grief, there's the memory of of happy times that you've had with that person. And you can see, and you're able to see that you're able to bring that through through the darkness of your paintings, but yet the the lights coming through. That yeah. you know, sadness is always there, but you know, if you can actually think of somebody that's that you're grieving, and think of how much if you can love them enough to grieve for them, then there has to be there has to have been something beautiful in the relationship and it's the same with your paintings if something is as dark and of um empowering as the sea and a sea in a storm and yet you can see the sunlight coming through mm -hmm. i would get um it's i i love the reason i love the gallery so much is because it's like a, a, an open exhibition all the time and I get people from all over the world coming in. And every time you'll get a different reaction to a painting. So it's a very individual yeah. uh, reaction. And in the eye of the beholder, of course. Yeah. And some people it'll resonate strongly. Others, it might bring a sadness. But others, for me, I paint the reality of, of the, you know, the sunsets of West Clare. They're not always bright and beautiful. They most certainly are. But I paint them as I see them and I spend an oh, I live up there practically, you know, as often as I can. I'm living there now as well um, while I'm where the gallery is open. But there you will get a memory from somebody or, you know, when we used to be down there as a child was swimming down in Clahan or I used to walk that beach with my father or I'm on holidays and I've just walked that beach. And I saw that sunset last night, you know, where you will get a cloud coming in, but you'll always get the light coming over and yeah. how it bounces off the waves. But I like texture. So that's why I like movement and I have to have waves as such. So um, because and there's a sense of texture as well in color. Because yes, color, will, it, it, uh, uh, color, even if it's on a flat surface. Yes, uh, can can create that um, that texture because of the of the the shades of the color that you use, or even the colors themselves. Do you know? I mean, you've gone with yours. You've gone from blacks and you have pinks and you have purples and you have blues, and they're all sh and yellows, but they're all shades of reds and shades of blues and shades of um. Per you know, it, it, it's just it's it's like as if you know the the um uh everything isn't isn't all dark no there's no all, there's, not. There's, 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 there's not. A, a positive there's a there's a lightness and a and a shading of lightness everything is getting better and light yeah, yes and everything will be fine you know just take a moment for yourself and we will be you know everything will be okay and of course during the pandemic of course that even means so much more for everybody and that's what i was going to ask you you, yeah. must, be be you must be um in your element <laughs> well, one would say I have, a, I have a spare room converted here and I'm painting in the kitchen for light because I get great light in the kitchen. And in here I'm I'm surrounded. I'm bil I'm, I'm, I'm becoming Kurt Twitters where I'm becoming more and more enclosed with all my work. But that's fine. I love it. I absolutely love it. It doesn't matter where I am to paint. But interesting, I just wanted to go back for a second. I'm, I'm talking about the colours in my paintings because um, you know, in the summer I might paint quite um in brightness, I might paint quite dark and in darkness I can paint quite light 
So, yeah. and I, it's, you know, of these things become realization the more and more that you paint, but um, the colors wouldn't be so, or they're not always dark. It's very, um, is this it according to your mood? Because if you answer that question now, people will say, well, looking at Anne's painting, she's always in a somber mood. Yeah, no, but <laughs> actually, I'm, I'm generally not that kind of, I'm not, generally I'm not. I would be more positive and chirpy and yeah, uh, take a lot to bring me down. But maybe, you know, who knows, there might be something in that why I would paint, that, so paint those kind of colours. But, you know, I would also paint quite bright colours. Um, I was just looking to see if I had any of my, my greeting cards. Just here. interesting, Anne, you went to, you went to uh, college in Dublin. I went to the art college here in Limerick. Um, uh, and, you know, you often hear people saying, and I had a colleague, a friend of mine, who, John Sherlock, who's a fabulous ceramicist, on um, a while back, a couple of weeks ago, on with me. And, you know, you talk about um, going to art college and people say, you know, that sometimes uh, colleges can actually drain you of creativity. Mm -hmm. And um, did you find that or did you find, because I, in a sense, I suppose I did, I, I love, I did ceramic art and I, I did paintings on art um, and, and turned them into decals and then put them onto the, onto the um, cups. And that's so I turned my cups into little um, 3D, I suppose, um, paintings. I used a cup or a vase or something as a canvas okay. for yeah. But I wanted to do sculpture, I wanted to do um, sculptural um, and, and contemporary um, uh, 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 teapots and coffee pots and, and um, they didn't want me to do that. They, they made me go down the route of delicate little teacups. And mm -hmm. I really did not want to do delicate little teacups. I wanted to do uh, conceptual coffee pots um, mm -hmm. where anything could go. And I think they push you in the, they did in the art college here in Limerick anyway, they push you into a direction you don't want to go to see how you'll, you'll come out of it. Um, you could argue that that um, takes away the love of what you want to really be good at in, an, in a college. If you were left alone to get to get really good at what you want to do but well there's a couple of ways i guess of looking at it my father was a sign writer my grandfather was a sign writer for the limerick operation so i okay. did sign writing so we always had sign writing as um in the genes so it came down from that side of the family in limerick now i always painted from a small child i was yeah. always painting i never i got the latest you know anything to do with art for Christmas spiral yeah. graph you name it but it was yeah. always craft and those days it was yeah it yeah, yeah. I was the same yeah so moving forward a lot of years and going to art college my parents moved to London um in 1987 and I stayed here to go to art college in Dublin now that was a very difficult decision but I wanted to do art and that was it but I wanted to do graphics because of the sign writing. I thought that was the direction I was to, I was supposed to go in. Yeah. Having done foundation year, going there, and you have to make that choice then. Yeah. You have to make this choice. Mm. And I was there going, graphics, fine art, painting. I love painting, graphics, painting. So I came in, I was sitting with Paddy Graham and my and, and Patricia Hurl, all great artists. I had the most yeah. fantastic um, uh, mentors. It was just exceptional. Donald Teske for um, life drawing. Um, I said, I was thinking of graphics, but I was, I thought maybe fine art painting and Peter Graham just looked at me and went, yes, yes. They kind of grabbed onto my words and went, yeah, yeah. I think you should, you should go for painting. And I said, okay, then I'll go for painting. But it was, you know, I, 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 and I loved it. Now, we were pushed to the limit of, I didn't do any sign writing in my artwork because, you know, that's, but I was pushed to my limit to think outside yeah. of the box. I was brought into a different, a whole new. Different yeah, that's the way I was too. I'm glad they did it in the end. Well, I was, I'm very happy too. I built a room for my, my I built a, uh, I was Tracy Emin before Tracy Emin. I built a room, it was um, eight foot long, six foot six high, and it was all white inside with um, a plaster Paris bed. My bed was plaster Paris with my stuff from it being a child. I had my teddy bear, my Deb's dress, everything was white everything was textured 
And on the outside, it was covered in my artwork, which I painted. Oh, my thesis, actually. I ripped up my thesis and stuck it to the walls outside and I threw bitumen paint all over it. So outside was crazy. Inside was lovely and protected and insular. You tore up your thesis. I tore it up. I ripped it up. Um, oh, I was delighted. I was done. I was done. It was my notes. Oh, yeah, that's OK. I painted on top of it. I didn't have one note left. And then I painted over the whole thing white um, with a canopy and a very small door, but you could go into it. You had to duck. But um, I would never, ever, ever have put my hand to building something like that myself and pushed to that limit when I was a painter. Yeah. So I'm very grateful that I was pushed outside the box. Um, whether you run with that or not is another story. And now I find later in life I am using texture again with my paintings and pushing myself to a different level, not necessarily painting your beautiful little tree cottage that Americans are in, and so on. And lots of tourists would love to buy traveling yeah. you know, in, on the wild Atlantic way. So you either like my work or you don't. That's fine. You know, you come to me if you like my work, if you don't, you know, it's an exhibition ongoing as you know, it's open all the time. But I don't paint for profit on painting for me so if people like that that's great but isn't it funny when you look at Liscanor going back to Liscanor and that I mean when I was in Bonratty Castle we have you know the folk the the Cayley um be below in the folk park the the all the flooring in the in the in the whole place in every one of the little cottages is all the Liscanor rock it's yes. all the Liscanor and you can see amongst that black rock uh, which it is, uh, you can see all those textures, Textures. you can see all the fossilized uh, little creatures that, um, inside in it that are also creating their own form of texture mm -hmm. and evoking, I suppose, in, in many respects, when you're, you, you look at it, it's a piece of history. Oh God, for sure. Because, and you know, it's, it, it's not just a, a, a piece of, uh, stone, all those little creatures that got got got, got uh, immersed in it over a period of centuries. Yes, yes. Country. My grandfather's house at the top of the hill in Liscanor. If it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't have gone back to Liscanor. I was minding him when my uncle would go away. I'd sit with my grandfather for a weekend and go out and take photographs and sketch and bring them back to him because he was housebound at this stage, and. Um, he would say that's God's country, you know, because Liscanor was God's country, Clahan is God's country. And I had an exhibition that I called God's country. So I always, and I, and it's a bright, actually it's a bright painting of um, Clahan, which is full of flaggy shore type rock, you know, it's all slate and it's an absolutely beautiful spot for was locals swimming there. It's everybody now, it's absolutely stunning. But it's not, um, there's no shops, there's no, you know, you just go down to the rocks and you just swim. It's it's absolutely beautiful. But I do paint there, with, not with people in them. I just paint the rocks and the sea and the waves at different times, different levels, different sunsets. And I just absolutely, for me, it's in 90% of my paintings that Liscanor and, Stone. And you know, uh, yeah, I, I just love the Lis Liscanor Stone. I was there for 14 years and we'd be, I'd always be looking down at the stone and thinking other people might find this repressive, um, this stone and, 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 and imagine to, uh, trying to take it out of their homes maybe. But you're looking at it and all the colors that's coming through and all the little creatures that's, you know, yes. um, trapped inside. Oh, and my all grandfather's, the yes. Yes. And the, the, the up and down, I used to dance in it, which was like, oh, right. I mean, you know, when you think about it now, post river dance and that, you know, people would be so much uh, more sensible and practical with <laughs> dancers than to actually allow them dance on the scanner rock. Oh, my God. I mean, you can imagine. I, I, I mean, I, I toured they the living stones for once. Pardon? Yeah. There were flagstones in a lot. Of their, I mean, I was yes. going to say that my grandfather's house and the wall around his house is Liscanor stone, as it is a lot of houses yeah. from old up there. But, um, you know, my my um, my grandfather's brother, like a lot of the uh, cottages had Liscanor stone as their flagstone. It was their kitchen floor. Yeah. So, yeah. But that's what this is. Dancing on that. Yeah. Know? And I mean, try it. And I remember one time dancing on it and I came down on the side of 
one of the raised pieces and uh, I, I can still remember the pain out my head. The pain was so bad, oh so bad. It took me five minutes for the scream to actually come out. And every time I, I think back on it, I think of Liscanner Rock, but it's our Liscanner Stone, but it's still so beautiful. But I want to ask you about the burren. How much are you influenced by the burn? Because I'm not an out, outdoorsy person at all. Um, for someone who has a dream of seeing places like uh, Colorado, maybe, you know, I blame John Denver and Rocky Mountain High for that. But um, I'm not an outdoorsy person, but my God, I get this calming sense when I go to places like the Burren. And uh, colours again, the, 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 uh, um, the uh, flowers that grow side by side, Arctic and tropical flowers that grow side by side, um, that are just um, absolutely beautiful. And I just, uh, and I'm just wondering, they would be a, just a spectacular spot for, for your paintings. Yes, I would All go there driving through or walking the dogs, um, unless, to be honest now, you know, of late in the last number of years, unless the sea is in it, I don't really paint it. Like I have to see, even in the background. So That's what I was wondering, are you obsessed with the sea? I like the, I like movement. Yeah. You know, so static rock, which I do paint, you know, there's no question I will still do this kind of work and I would sketch it. But for me, I love the texture and the movement. So moving the palette yeah, knife sometimes please. will actually create the way for you that you haven't expected to happen. So, you know, sometimes there's happy accidents and I don't want it to be so particular to paint a rock and it has to look like a rock or that wave has to look like a wave. Sometimes the wave will happen because the palette knife is loaded with paint and it's in the right direction and the right speed and the right amount of paint. As I say, maybe a happy accident, but that's not to say I wouldn't paint the burn. But for me, I just prefer to have a background, either a background in the distance and I could have rocks in it, you know, close up rocks. But I would prefer I'm thinking of the flowers and I'm thinking of the they are beautiful, uh, yeah. the, the flowers and you have those and then you have the megalithic tombs and yes. they're all creating that sense of drama and theater. And it's going back to something you said earlier that you all, you, you, you think it's um, the drama that you, you like, the drama, is, of the, scene, yeah. the drama <laughs> of the sky. I would have been, I, I would be the same. I would always have gone for even with, when I, you know, I, I qualified to teach speech and drama, but, <laughs> I would have always gravitated towards the most dramatic pieces because I'm pretty dramatic anyway. <laughs> and even when, you know, when I've been competitions for poetry or anything like that, I would always go for the really dramatic pieces that would actually draw from your voice senses of um, sadness and, um, you know, upward and downward inflections. And I, and I probably, that's probably why I see what I see in your paintings, that mm. that kind of um, storytelling in your painting, that life is just, it's not all about monotone. Yes, there's, there's no that. Yes, exactly. And I suppose, you know, at the same time, and it's, I've always kind of gone against the grain a little bit. Other people would just put blue sky. There you go. You know, I have a few that are just plain blue skies and there's nothing wrong with that. It's absolutely lovely. But for it's just for me, I kind of like I just like it to it, I could start off with a blue, beautiful blue sky and say I'm going to have a bright day today and I'm going to paint and I'm in a great mood. I'm having a great time painting this. <laughs> and before I know it, I've brought in the indigo and I'm bringing in here. And the next thing I know, I've moved on to. It's getting darker and darker. Darker and darker. The sea is changing and I'm getting reflections and now I'm going, right, I need a big wave here. And it just, you know, these things just happen sometimes, you know, unless it's a commission and it's particular to something that they would like. I will say I'll do my best for you, but it will be painted the way, you know, in my way, um, which is why they will come to me for a commission. Yeah, I was just going to say uh, people, I suppose, who are going to commission Anne Daly to do a painting, will know that Anne Daly's um, style 
of, yes. of, of yeah. painting. Vicky Phelan now, um, I, I, I have done a commission for Vicky Phelan in the last um, six months um, and it's in her house in Doonbeg. So she just popped into the gallery and she bought a number of other things as well for her home, but the commissional piece, um, which was meant for her home, um, went to her favourite place in Doonbeg, which works really, really well. It's quite a large piece, but she knew exactly um, what she told me what she'd like. And I, I went off and, you know, came back with the image. And um, do you take photographs? Or yes, you, I take. Or I take you, you, you'd never be able to go out in in in, in that. Um, Not in those. I, mean, I tell you what, I do paint an awful lot of sunsets. So sunsets in the in the middle in the height of summer are can be can be moody and dramatic with different colours coming through. And um, when I say moody, that doesn't mean dark. It just means yeah, yeah, moody. atmospheric. So I would, you know, I could take an awful lot of photographs walking my dogs in the hinge. I would tend to be sort of along the coastline of, you know, Spanish Point, Milton Malbay, Moy, La Hinch, La Scanner, um, Doolin, Fenor. I just love that sort of coastline there. And interestingly, I, you know, La Scanner is in the centre of all of that, which is where my heart is kind of does lie. So, you know, I can paint from the heart while I'm painting from there anywhere along the, the line. So I, you know, it doesn't have to be all moody, but my photographs and I have gone out and painted in Clahan. It is quite, um, it's not always windy. We've had a couple of beautiful days. I thought I could, I would just love to be up there, but they will be different, you know, and I will bring them back to the studio and finish them off. So I would paint in the gallery. So often people can come into the gallery. When they come into the gallery, I'm standing there painting because it's my studio as well. And when you pay, when you look at your photographs back in re retrospectively, you look at the photograph that you've taken, um, how far from the photograph has your painting deviated or is it true to the, the, the photograph or, I mean, do you, in, in the process of looking at it, analyze and think, you know, um, this color would be, uh, should be deeper or that color should be deeper or are you yes. very much um, well, somebody depends, that yeah. tries to keep to the, the photograph? Yes, there's certain ones that I would keep to the photographs, for instance, I just said, you know, I not necessarily don't paint, I don't necessarily paint cottages. However, I have painted a couple of castles, but they were right for the time when I painted them. They were true. They would be very true to the image that I've taken. Yeah. You know, colors and, and But in a style of Van Daly that I would be using a palette knife on the castle and the foreground would be quite thick. Um, very little sea because they were the castles. However, when it comes to the sea, I have artistic license. I will see a lavender or I will see um, crimson red that other people won't see. So if I start and I like that color going through it and that's, you know, that then will come through every other direction throughout the painting. Um, so they don't have to be. And if I'm painting with, obviously we'll say with a palette knife and the movement in the way that it's very, very, very thick and mm. it's thick enough to touch, but you can't that you, I want you to touch it, that may not be the same as what my photograph is. And I and it's not meant to be. So I will get a lot of hints and tips from my photograph and I will keep most of it the same, but I will have other, you know, some extra waves or an extra rock here. Or if I feel like brightening up the sunset, I'll brighten up the sunset, but I don't tend to paint a perfect sunset. It'll be very thick line of paint with a palette knife. Claire, Claire and the scanner would be um, very much in your soul really. Yes. For a Limerick woman. Yes. It, 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 it's obviously um, that that's inherited from your mother. Yes and I think a lot of it too would be that my parents went to a UK when I was just you know quite young and home for me was Limerick. I didn't go because I don't want to leave home. Limerick was home to my whole family. Yeah. And they would come home. Um, they still live in London, um, but and Limerick was it, you know, positive Limerick and promoting Limerick. And I'm a very proud Limerick woman. I'm yeah. only living in Clonlara, three miles outside of yeah of the of the border, but and I'm very close to Limerick. Um, going then, going being brought back to Liscanner, the other side of the family, my mother's family with my grandfather, in later years was just. It was fantastic. So family are very important to me. And, and I tend to do, I do paint. When I was in art college, I painted about family. 
and immigration and you know my family moving yeah um and then when I was in the scanner I was thinking about the area because of my grandfather and what it meant and all the stories he would tell me about the place and meeting Amy and Eamon de Valera and it was just amazing yeah just fantastic and I love that I love home I love stories and that yeah I I can be I'm attached to it so yeah I must I, I love to... I love stories as well I suppose my mum would have been one of these people who was always the one that people would come to to find out who was such a person and mm -hmm. who was their grandmother because she'd have listened to her own mother telling stories and those story stories passed down from generation and I think it's in our blood here I was born in the UK and my dad was but I think it's um in our blood to love and be um storytellers and storytelling um and you and again you know I'd say the um tourist market would be very very strong for you and because you know, especially people who have the, the diaspora, who have um, memories of Ireland. I think the the paintings are really evocative of of uh, homes, ho homeliness and homesickness yes. and, and longing for home. Yes, I would. I would get um, people that would like my it's very unexpected, funnily enough, when people come in and they see my work there, it's they might be expecting a different type of gallery on the Wild Atlantic Way uh, because it's not necessarily built for, it's not made, I don't paint for the American market, I'm not painting for the English market, I'm painting for me. So to come into this sort of mad thick paint and loads and loads of, you know, um, dark and bright paintings, which I now do prints of so they can take them away in their, in their, in their suitcase. Um, it's sometimes it's a little bit shocking for some people that come into it because they're not they do not expect it yeah. but if they get it they just get it yeah and, you know they could and that's it it's it's gone they you know it's sold it's shipped mm -hmm. it's gone to we, have to it's we, have, we have to talk about your big commission for the movie ah uh, yes yeah. television so i have um it's not until Sunday night, Sunday, March the 7th. It's called, it's a drama. It's a BBC yeah. RT. I think it's the first collaboration of BBC and RT on a drama, which was filmed in West Clare starting, what was it? I think it started last February. Um, of course, filming, I couldn't, I couldn't be sure about February now. I couldn't and be sure. Name, and the name of it is? It's called Smother. Yeah. And it's starring Dervla Kerwin amongst um, Conor Mullen. There's so many names in it um, that they everybody will know. But of course, Dervla Kerwin was the one that jumped out at me. And um, Dervla all Kerwin, your paintings are in all all of the scenes. Yes. So the production designer, I got a phone call coming up to open the gallery, asked me was I open, and I said I'd be open in twenty minutes. <laughs> I'll be open now if you want me to. But I was on my way up. I wasn't actually there. <laughs> And uh, they said, when are you open? I said, I should be there in 20 minutes. And they basically said, we'll be there in 10. And I was like, OK, I zoomed out, opened the door. And the, I didn't expect the production um, designer, the manager to be there. He, he also arrived and came in and just again, it was kind of it is a little bit shocking when not shocking, but it was unexpected what he saw. And um, he looked around and he said that he just absolutely loved the work and and he said, I'll, I want to take that, 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 that. I'll have those, not buy them, they were rented. <laughs> I was just going to say, and you should have said, fantastic, <laughs> let me get the till warmed <laughs> up. <laughs> let me get that till warmed up. I don't I 10% discount. Oh, I didn't mind. I was so excited that they wanted to use my work on the sets. So there's a number of different characters in a number of different houses and my work is being used in all the houses. So my work will be splashed all over this. And it's in, I can't really say there's so many houses because it hasn't started. So I don't want to tell people, um, but I'm also an extra in it. So my head will pop up here and there. And um, how did you manage to get that? Did you say, can I have, be an extra? I was an extra in the Michael Collins movie. Oh, lovely. No. And I fell. Uh, 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 at the De Valera scene uh, or the Michael Collins scene at the mansion house and I was pushed in the crowd 
and I fell and I was picked up and I didn't know who I was being picked up by. And when I looked, it, I heard it's very crowded here. And I looked and it was Liam Neeson. Oh, I and I was in such utter shock because I, I just adore Liam Neeson acting. I was just in such utter shock. All I could say was, hmm. <laughs> That's all that came out of me. And two women came over and said, what? What was it like to be lifted up by the oh. I can't even remember it other than it felt like eternity let, uh, being placed on the ground. He's so tall. He's he much taller so in real life than he, he is. We, is in, in, we in, met in, him actually. Well, when I say we met him, we we were both um Ronan and I, Ronan, my husband, has painted, uh, did a paint, he's a portrait artist, um, Ronan O'Boyle, and he did a painting of Gray, um, oh my God, it'll come to me in a minute. And the painting anyway went to the, to the um, New York Art Center where there was an auction on for a fundraiser for their new for the new art center in New York. And Liam Neeson is a patron of that and he was there. So we were allowed to go to that and we we saw him. He was very close and well, I was closer to him. You, you were you were lifted up. You were like, don't get it. Oh, my point is, he is a really, really tall man. And I think Ronan's. Uh, oh, he's enormous. He's he's in, mother, I think she tall. taught him in school. She she was his teacher, I think, in school in Northern Ireland. Yeah, yeah. So how do we, how do your paintings juxtapose? I suppose you and your husband. He's he's a portrait artist, mm -hmm. and you're and you're. A landscape artist, if you like, you're it's absolutely an atmospheric fine. painter. Yeah, it's good because it'd be worse if we were painting the same thing. Um, it's, yeah. it's very, very different, and um, just have separate rooms. <laughs> you know? We couldn't paint in the same room. We, you know, I like. Does he get your painting? Do you get him? Oh, absolutely. Because he he would be probably a realist. He's more technical as well. Yeah, technical. he's quite. He, yes, he's 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 excellent work. Um. So yeah, he would be more realist, but um, you know, it's it's getting well, it's sort of slightly contemporary in parts. You know, yeah, when yeah. you look at it closely, it's slightly, but it's it, it's excellent. Absolutely, Ronanoboyle.ie. <laughs> have, have a look. dot com dot com dot com, and um, uh, but you know, and actually, he has one piece of artwork also in in Smother as well. So in one of the houses. Oh, so so, so you can say to him, well, you know, look at all of my. Where is yours, Ron? <laughs> I took a photo. I think I hope if you'd know it, you'd know it was different. So you'd know. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. I did have to paint um a piece specifically for Smother, um, one large, more modern art piece. So um without giving anything and the characters away, but there will be a bit large painting that's very different to my work, but it was painted specifically for Smother. But I own all the work, so, um, and it's rented, so all my work will be for sale, um, and it'll be double the, double the price come the 8th of March. Treble the price, <laughs> Anne, treble the price. Did your style evolve quickly, or, I mean, I can't imagine you now being a graphic designer because, um, you know, I, I think, I think, uh, your passion is in the physicality of actually creating the painting, the, the, the almost like the the dirt and grime of getting your fingers pa oh, covered in paint and 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 um, and using the palette knife and everything. I don't think you'd get that if you had actually gone down the road of graphic. Oh, to be honest, Mary. I mean, even being an extra and miming. I don't know how I did it because I just love, I love people and I love, nobody would get any work done if I was a graphic designer because I'd never shut up. You need, you know, there'd be no, there'd be no peace. I love meeting people. I love people coming into the studio. I love, you know, enjoying the work, the, the art of selling even. I, I enjoy talking about it. Um, so to sit, I couldn't sit at a desk all day and do that now. I, you know, I've worked in an office over the years. I've worked in aviation. I, I had a great time and things could have went in a different direction. But um, luckily, I just decided there was nothing. It's now or never at one point. 
just go the whole hog and paint full time. I got a studio in Limerick with uh, Contact Studios and there was 15 of professional artists there and that's where it yeah. spiraled from there and got this gallery in the scanner. So um, I'm missing the scanner now because the gallery in the scanner, which is beside it, it's called the Atlantic Way Gallery beside the church. And um, that was also my studio. So I am missing it. I've moved so much stuff back. Thanks be to God. Um, or, you know, I'd be in trouble because I can't go over the five kilometers. But I have everything back here now to paint. So it's um, it's an interesting time because my work has got softer in some ways, in some respects. It has to do with the pandemic. Um, and my, you know, I've softened. I've even bought a blending brush, which I never thought I'd have a blending brush for my actually during the first wave. I used a Mac um, blusher brush for painting with because my blending brush was worn out from all the blending I was doing. So I, and I couldn't get one. So I just got my makeup brush and I started yeah. using that. And that was, look, I wasn't wearing makeup, so it's fine. <laughs> it's an expensive brush I though. I didn't wear makeup at all. So, you know, I'd, I'd, uh, I used to have a lot, lots of makeup brushes and things like that, that you'd get from, uh, because I'd use the moisture, the lot of moisturizers and that. And if you bought enough of them, they'd give you, they'd give you, um, Free brush, free, free brush, brush and things like that. And nice. we looking at All right. Them. Yeah. Well, you know, what I love is with texture when you're painting with oil paint and texture, like lots of things will make marks, you know, so I could pick up the top of my pen and make a mark. I could use the palette knife. I could use a cocktail stick. Use, use the, fabric. Use fabric. Have you use ever brush. used fabric? Well, when I was in art college, I used to use fabric with bitumen paint and pasta of Paris a lot. So, yes, I used to lose a lot. Of, and I had it in my my final year show as well fabric but it's not I'm not you know a textile person really I'd be more tactile so for and me I, it's and I'd probably be more textile yes I'm, so I'm, I had, yeah. I'm, I'm more into patterns and um and colors I and should show you um I'll show you show you I did this in my first lockdown actually I don't know if you can see this can you see this oh look oh the, the texture of this the candle so, it is um it is a uh, it is flowers it's vincent van gogh flowers on a roll of toilet paper and it's called Anne van gogh painting uh, <laughs> <laughs> as she coughs i've started coughing actually it matches your top ah i love blue i love blue yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> I but uh, yeah, no, I, I, I am. Um, that's the way I would be more a, a pattern. And I've, I've been looking lately um, at, um, at these. Um, I don't know what you call them. They, they're, they're, they're pour. They're pouring. They pour the paint. So basically, you have the canvas, yes. and then they, they use a. They use this kind of a, a, a stuff to thin out the paint and then they pour the paint on top and then they pour another layer of a different color and they could have about 20 different layers of paint on top of each other. And then you, you, you um, turn the canvas. I've seen this. All of it is just poured off and then they use balloons and they fill the balloon or partially fill the balloon, depending on how, how filled the balloon is, it gives a completely different texture. And you just press the balloon on different areas and it creates this um, impression of almost like a mixture between butterflies and flowers it, mm. in amongst all the other colors that almost like the background of your painting now with all of these uh, images and colors come out that you didn't actually think because you might have had yellow in there and you might have had red in there and an orange will come through that mm -hmm. you didn't actually think. And it's, I, I'm just, I think they're absolutely mesmerizing. It's very, very relaxing. I've watched so many of those videos. For me now, that would be re very relaxing. Oh, there's of... one woman and she's Australian. She's, I can't think of her name, but she is just spectacular and blowing do you know with a straw yes and you just blow onto the canvas and it shoots out and and then you get a hair dryer 
or there's a special kind of a blower you can get and you just go over the canvas with it and it creates all these little air bubbles yes. on the canvas and crystallizes the whole thing and you can see your texture in that again oh and it's just I mean it's mesmerizing and I'm there and I'm thinking I want to do that but I would love to do it on a really enormous canvas and I wouldn't be able to get the canvas out of my attic down into the bedroom to put it on one big I'd love one big wall filled with it just at one large canvas but I can't Maybe you could try you know uh, two canvases like a diptych put two on the ground and yeah two and put the you know I've got you think of that or even three um three long narrow ones and uh, and the pattern continue throughout uh, or you know because it's never going to be the same no matter if you put the balloon wherever you put the balloon there's a different color will come through and a different effect and oh it's just I just <laughs> you have to do it Mary. I've been up until four o'clock. Once I start watching one, I <laughs> think, oh, Jesus, Mary, you need to go to bed. But then I just watch one more. One more, just one more. And mm -hmm. it's the, I find, like you, it's the colors coming through. It's the, te for me, it's the patterns that are created that almost um, ethereal. There's one that she has done and it's almost ethereal. It looks like, it looks like little um, butterflies and and uh, fairies floating mm -hmm. away from from flowers. And you're thinking it's just so magical, mm -hmm. completely different from your paintings. And in the sense oh, that it, there's no there's no there's it, its own texture is there through the colors and through the uh, flowers. But it's very vibrant. Lots of reds, lots of oranges, lots of purples, lots of greens um but again lots of texture in, in itself and maybe it's, that's what i love about your paintings yeah it's if it, it flows mine would be control flow and that's pretty much uncontrolled flow because it's moving without your control as such you're controlling the angle yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Not the way it's falling but you can't control that the yellow is going to be up there in that corner for a horizon or you know no but you can you see because you could say to yourself i've seen her doing it and she's there and she thinks it might need a little bit more yellow so then she'll pour some yellow all oh, right up, yeah. up in that corner and yeah. then she'll press the balloon or fabric or um and then that creates another texture i've uh, seen um thread used in these where a thread is put out like a piece of rope is put onto it and pulled across and it pulls all the colors across like a butterfly wing as such. It's a, yeah, it's, it's, it's unusual because you don't know what's going to actually, what's going to come up. Yeah, no, I know. And I think that I'm, I, I always thought in the art college, I was somebody, the reason I did ceramics and the reason I did, well, the reason, not the reason I did ceramics, but the reason I did decals and doing all the artwork and then turning them into decals was because I liked the certainty. This is what I want the canvas to, uh, this is what I want the cup to look like. Whereas John, my friend, John Sherlock, he did um, raku firing and he never knew when he was putting it into the firing, or he still doesn't know what way it's going to come out because it depends on the temperature of the fire. And he loves the uncertainty. I don't, I like the certainty of knowing this is now what I want. Yeah. I would have been more a designer and, um, and, and, and bringing my artwork to, to um, a canvas uh, rather than somebody that was experimental. I'm not, I, I, I don't like experimenting as much. I suppose you, yeah, you might have been a great graphic designer because I, or you see, you know, because you, it's quite structured and, and not always, you know, I mean, obviously yeah. not all. But no, I like certain amount of, 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 of uncertainty, but I like um, it, it's still to be what I had planned or I saw in my, uh, in my head. I suppose and, that's the difference for me. I get excited about what's going to happen. I sometimes have no idea what's going to happen. And that's John. John is like that. Yeah. I just that's cannot cool. wait to, I have some ca new canvases, which are hard to get. Um, 
and I'm yeah they're going to be interesting they'll be hopefully they're going to be a bit different um there will be move I'm painting on circular paint uh circular canvas so yeah they're, I'm looking forward to a whole new series coming up now but I have to get my head into the zone I found this phase a bit harder than obviously the last phase I loved painting in phase one and this phase has been a bit harder simply because of the had the darkness and the shorter, you know, because I'm painting in natural light um, in the kitchen. So I find it difficult to to get going this time. I have done and I, once I get started, that's it. I can't stop. So they're all primed and they're ready to go. And once we have um, March the 7th and smother on RT out of the way, once that starts, I know my head is going to be in a different Your house must be very creative and must be very calm. Two artists in the one house, Can you or is it the other extreme? <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it Anne Van Kauf? It's Anne Van Kauf, that's me. <laughs> Anne Van and and Cad Kauf. <laughs> and Cad Kauf. Cad Kauf. <laughs> Allowed to cough. Eh, no, there's stuff everywhere now at the moment, but luckily, you know, um, sure, there's nobody calling. I don't mind. It's never been that kind of a home. We have, you know, it's it's quirky enough. We we collect, we, you know, we buy, cards. we buy a lot of our, our, you know, what we like. So, uh, we, you know, we have we have no more room. So there isn't that many pieces of mine and Ronan's hanging around the house. We have lots of other artists hanging around the house, which we love. Um, all I need now is I would love to have my own space to put to be my studio here because I'm spending so much time here. I've never needed it because my studio is in the scanner, but who knows what, what way things will go. So it might be a case of having to put something out the back um, and a little stove, who knows, you know, we'll see. What, what more do you want? An art studio and a little stove. Oh, I'd be in heaven. A kettle. Kettle, <laughs> kettle, always for tea. I'm addicted to tea. So, so we'll see. A kettle, yeah. huh? You know, we don't know what's going to happen in the future. I'm hoping that, we, you know, the gallery and my studio will be open come July. You know, I was hoping June, but who knows? Um, July, it was last England, year. England is, is opening up. 21st of June. But we don't know. You know, we might open up, but we still may not allow travel. So um, I, I just don't know. You know, um, last year was lovely. I have to say the Irish are so supportive of their own they were fantastic for shopping local um it that's was good a ball game altogether but i'm telling you people really you know they're great yeah. and you know like this like this call that we're having right now people wanted to have a view or wanted to have a, photo, a painting or said that the, you know i liked her painting before maybe they'll save for a painting because they want part of the ocean in their home now or one part of ball. ireland and they want the painting behind them or they want to look at it, whatever. I'm hoping that that's what's going to happen once I open that we'll have. Yeah, food. well, it's the same with us, with the station. We kind of feel that we're, we're aimed at the Irish, naturally, the Irish audience. But um, in particular, I suppose the um, the diaspora people who have who are in other countries, love the country they're in, but are lonely. There's there's things they crave the Irish accent, the Irish sense of humor, the Irish sea, the colors that that that, that come on the sea, um, and through our shows we're hoping that we'll be able to give them at least a reason to stay another day in maybe New York or Boston or London or wherever because they love the country but they just you know they might just have enough after an hour of or two hours of watching shows about Ireland to feel well I feel like I was back home for an hour or two yeah I can now go out in 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 New York and I pick up where we got up, left off tomorrow mm -hmm. night on Lear that's yeah. what we're hoping oh that's great that's lovely well I have to say you know the Americans and, the, and I miss them terribly. I have made such good friends from the gallery and I have people, Americans that have come in and plus all over the world, but in particular, I'm going to say the States that have stayed in touch with me. Um, looking forward to coming over as soon as, as soon as the gates and the flights are, you know, they can land, they'll be here. So, you know, and, and they've been very uh, well wishing. Hopefully that when we do, that it could be work one way or the other. We can have an influx um, or we will have 
None at all. They may I not. think we'll have an influx. I think people will go. People will be sick. I'll be hugging people that I don't even know. I think people, at least, I'm loving people being nice to each other. I, yeah. you know, I'm reading loads of terrible things and I can just not read them if I don't want to. But I love that people, I find people are nicer. I haven't changed much, but like, you know, I, people have just been so kind. Yeah. Uh, we're looking into people's eyes now because we can't see their face. We're looking into their eyes for expression, which is lovely, I think. It's unfortunate we can't see everyone's faces, but we're really getting to, you're really looking into the soul of people now. Yeah. And um, all over with the homelessness of Limerick, people are donating massively. You know, everyone's trying to help out here, there and everywhere. We're trying to support Shop Local. We're supporting our own and supporting artists. Yeah. The Irish have been amazing. And the Americans have been fantastic, will be fantastic and have been fantastic. And I miss them terribly. And I'm looking forward to them all coming back. Yeah. But the Irish, you know, and I'm hoping that the, you know, that the Irish is day is well so we have a thing, haven't we? I just think, you know, we can yeah. we put the stops out when we need to. And it's been hard. For, for for some people. Well, we hope that people will actually, and maybe you'll tell an, any of your any of your contacts to go into our, our YouTube channel, which is Lear Media TV. That's L I R, as in the children of Lear. Oh. Um, Lear Media TV, and um, give our, our uh, subscribe to our channel so that Absolutely. you know we're trying to reach a thousand. That's our our uh, we we're at i think 400 and something but we're trying to reach the thousand um subscribers it's free to do yeah, so absolutely no problem at all they'd love this i have lots of friends and clients in the states they would love this absolutely. and if if, you, if anyone wants to come on the show and uh, has a story or has anything that they'd like to talk about on the show feel free to put them in contact with me Absolutely, no problem at all. It's, it's, it's fantastic what you're doing. I appreciate it. It's really good. Thank, thank you, Anne. And it was an absolute uh, joy chatting to you today. And you, fellow, a fellow artist, a fellow um, creative person. We're kind of a bit. We're kind of a bit um, uh, uh, different. Mary, I have to just say, the last time that I spoke to you, you were all wet. I know I was hoping I could get through this interview without reminding without being reminded <laughs> of the ice bucket challenge and uh, it was radio and I was uh, I was doing a radio show and Anne was my guest on uh, on the radio and um, she poured the ice cold bucket of water over me for the challenge. I didn't even know you. <laughs> well, no. I love the crack. <laughs> I think uh, you were on the show for about a half an hour, an hour. I think it was an hour a show. And uh, and straight away you said, yeah, I poured the bucket of water over you. I thought, <laughs> did, did it re was it really that bad an interview? <laughs> I'm back. It wasn't that bad. I'm back. <laughs> I was freezing. You know, and, you know, but anyway, and, and Daly, thank you so much. And sure. to your husband, Ronan continued success thank you so much mary i wish you all the best thank you shindera leshan clara that's the end of the show until the same time or until the next time lacuna of day but while i'm to galer chiacana son as august grow august good day shift sloan good day shift sloan and bye bye